Mr. Billy Walker, the last time we met it was at Glen Ellachie, shortly after you bought the distillery. Um, what has happened since then? Are you happy with how things transpired there? Yeah, I think by and large we're, uh, we are happy and more importantly excited. Um, I mean, the history of trying to, uh, trying to uh, fulfill and, and, and complete the acquisition was exciting in itself. We understood the kind of uh, the kind of quantitative side of what we were buying. We knew a little bit about the qualitative side, but once we had uh, acquired the distillery and were allowed to to get into the to the to the to, to, to the warehousing where the real diamonds and jewels were residing, yeah, we're very happy with uh, with um, what we found. I, mean, I had been familiar with Granalaki uh, in, 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 in any way because we, it had been a quite important uh, part of some of the blends that I had prepared historically. So I knew that Granalaki was a fairly, um, a fairly full-bodied uh, space-side, wasn't necessarily a typical space-side. What I wanted to really initially to find out is what was the wood like, uh, was I comfortable with the kind of percentages of uh, American barrels, fresh American barrels, uh, first and second fills, the number of butts, the number of hogsheads, was the mix right? So we very quickly, and over a period of maybe three months, formed a, a picture of who we were, and that then that then informed us as to what can we do and what is what is the milestones in this journey that we're about to set on. And we've done a lot of work. I mean, my intention is that, um, look. The ultimate for, for any blender is the pursuit of perfection. So we've taken what is uh, a, some very interesting inventory and we're realigning it with our thinking. We know, we know where we want, we know that what we want for the DNA of, uh, of Granalaki. And kind of the sherry influence is going to play a significant role as we develop the range and you'll see that already tonight. Um, so yes, there are no disappointments. We are very happy. Uh, we've done a lot of things that are making the distillery more interesting. Um, we have totally reconfigured the, the, the kind of production scheduling. We, um, it's a distillery that can produce four million liters and we have no interest in operating at that level. So it allows us to do things like long fermentation. Um, and there are many consequences of that which we will, will emerge as the, as the new fill spirit that we are making matures into the future. So yeah, look, we're very happy with the acquisition. Delighted and surprised that we were able to do it quite as quickly. Was there anything you would say that surprised you about what you found there, positive or negative, something you didn't expect? I think there, there, there were things that would surprise me in a sense that I didn't expect. Were the, were the disappointing surprises? No, not really. You know, we, you, you, have, you have your own mindset that determines what you expect and where you want to go. And as I've said, of course we've made some changes. We've made the site a much more fully integrated site. You know, we've introduced our own filling uh, systems. We're in the process of relocating most of the inventory that we own in-house in order that we can then actually follow as we do with, uh, with all the distilleries we've owned that we are following the development of all the casks and we record this in our Bible of Facts which is, tells us exactly where we are with any particular year of maturation. What are our opinions on it and what do we want to do with it is in a year's time or two years time or three years time. So the kind of, there is a map being laid out uh, constantly and we are religiously following it. So, the, the stock you've got there from, uh, from Glen Ellachie that was bought with, with the distillery lends itself uh, to, to blending. It was used for blending a lot. No, it, it was used for blending, but I think in the context of everything, you have to remember that really until the, the 2000s, the real players in the single malt industry were four or five. You had uh, Glen Fittich, Glen Livett, um, Macallan, uh, Glen Morangie, um, and maybe one or two others. All the other distilleries essentially were supports as part of the jigsaw for making some of the very famous blends. 
Um, it's really only in the last 20 years, 25 years, that you've seen a very powerful emerging, emerging, emerging uh, single malt boutique style uh, brands coming to the market. And these distilleries are being allowed to express themselves with their own personality. And it's great. You know, we did it with, uh, we were lucky to be able to do it with uh, Ben Reich and Glen Jornick and then Glen Lasserke. And we're even more lucky to be able to be given the gift of taking Glen Alarchy and allowing it to express its personality to, to the world. Mm. Uh, nowadays, uh, let's assume I've got a lot of money, right? Would you still recommend to buy a distillery or to be a, a financing one? Or would you say, no, times have changed, don't do it anymore? No, I don't think I would, uh, I don't think I would be uh, di dissuading you from becoming involved. I mean, all I would say is that um, every distillery, and certainly new start distilleries, there is a huge cash demand. Yeah. You, ha you really, you have to have long-term deep pockets until you get the whiskey to the point and the age point yeah. at which you can bring it to the market and start generating cash. Really, frankly, what I would say to you is you need, from day one, to get you to the point where you bring mature whiskey to the market at the correct age, you're going to need about 12 million pounds. Yeah. Right. And so the, the stock you bought with Glen Allerchy was like a bank account for, for Glen Allerchy as well? Yes, it was. And, it, and the, 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 the really charming thing about the inventory was that it was uh, over a number of years we and, and as you can see from the expressions we're talking about tonight we've got a 15 we've got an 18 a 25 we've had some 1970s in the market we're going to introduce a 30 year old and a 20 year old so the spread of inventory has been really really interesting and has allowed us to be quite creative Mm. with what we have in your house. What would be the oldest cask that would be usable for a single malt that you have in the inventory? Right the oldest cask we have are 1978 and they are all in very, very in sparkling sherry casks. Great. Billy, thank you for your time. Thank you for talking to us and I'm really looking forward to the tasting now. Okay, thank you. Thank you.